Welcome to Let's Talk ASPM. My name is Mark Lambert, Chief Product Officer here at Armour Code, and I'm joined by my good friend and colleague, Rohan Parak. Rohan, how are we doing? Doing good, Mark. How about you? Very good. Thank you. Big news this week, right? Something popped this weekend. Why, why, why don't we dig into this uh, XZ Utils thing? Yeah, if I told my family that there is something called as XZ, which has caused, caused havoc, they would have thought of it as an April Fool's joke. But but apparently there is, right? And apparently there is an open source compression library where there's a supply chain issue and a different sort of supply chain issue. Historically, and for most part, we see supply chain issues of vulnerabilities where the code is badly written, right? And then there's somebody's able to exploit that. In this case, the code was, so to say, maliciously written with that intent by the developers or contributors of that particular package who have been maintaining that package for some time now. And while we can all talk about uh, frustrations and you know uh, uh, how open source developers are not motivated enough, they don't have enough motivation to con continue contributing to it, but, but these sort of things will happen, can happen. So, and, and the best part is it was not discovered by a security researcher, it was discovered just by chance because somebody was troubleshooting a performance issue on their on their Linux server, and they kind of had the skills to trace it back to the library and trace it back to what this particular library was doing, which is where there was a very sophisticated uh, malicious code intentionally uh, added to the library. Now, of course, it could have been intentional in the sense somebody wanted to do that, or it could have been that their accounts or their access was compromised. We don't know that yet. But for practitioners, the problem stays there because now you have a library which could be, which is used or in your Linux operating systems and which could be used in many other places because it's open source library that can be used by any software developer also. So that's where we are, that's the lay of the land and you know, it happened over the week, a long weekend, which is becoming quite a common theme nowadays in the open source security world. Yeah, yeah. So, so in, in, in essence, as you said, it's a software supply chain. It kind of sits for me. It's like a little bit between a solar winds and a log four J. Probably a little bit more solar winds in in nature of the attack, right? The, the 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 code base was compromised, either intentionally or unintentionally, or through some compromising a compromise of the of the account privileges. But it's in an open source library. So how do we normally protect ourselves with open source libraries? It's the trust that the code is well maintained, right? It's maintained by the right people, that it's signed correctly. All of this would have passed. So we wouldn't have detected it that way. We would like really there's an issue. It was found it, the guy was using Valgrind to do memory debugging, right? So so you know, he found it great, you know, and, and we're got awareness, and now there's a CVE, and now there are scanners in place, and we can start trying to tracking it down and but the, the trouble is, it's nothing you could have done proactively to find this. You have to react, and it's the same as any other zero day. You have to understand your scope of impact and mobilize the team because you can't just do it everything everywhere. A lot of people still dealing with log4j. So, uh, what what's the what's the first step? What what does an organization do when something like this pops over the weekend? Exactly. So there's no smoking gun, right? And unless you have a big, big team who is kind of proactively looking at all the open source libraries and their code bases and kind of looking at what's there and looking at the looking and reviewing the intent of the code it's impossible for somebody to do this, handle this proactively yes you can get visibility into what you have in your environment uh, what if you, are you using those components in the, your environment using the traditional supply chain means but proactively that there is not much you can do but definitely your preparation, the, the proactiveness that you would bring in in the form of having an inventory of all your software libraries and then third party open source libraries that you're using in your platform. And uh, and also kind of keeping a track of that will help you reacting to the situation. Right? So let's see what would that look like today, right? Now, most of the organizations over the weekend would have created a sort of a war room for this kind of CV, right? And the CISOs and executives and application owners and CIOs would be looking at what's my blast radius, right? How am I impacted? And as I said, right, let me bring up my screen here as well and as I'm doing that. The first thing that you would want to do is, am I impacted? 
right? Do we even have, are we even using that particular vulnerability? And as you can see, this war room dashboard that we created, right? It, it tells you that it, the numbers show this, yes, yes, there is some impact. Now you analyze the impact. How many libraries are actually using this particular component or the vulnerable libraries? How many products are impacted? How many microservices or services are impacted? How many teams are impacted? Because eventually, most likely these are the teams who are going to probably work over the weekend to uh, fix these issues, right? But that also tells us that there are 10 other teams that we, we don't need not worry about and not ruin their weekends as well. Further down, if you can drill down on that, right? Again, going back, which teams are these? Which What are these two teams that have to go and work and what's their blast radius, right? Web team clearly has a higher exposure because they have higher number of CVs uh, findings associated with this, uh, with this particular vulnerable version. Uh, we also know what all libraries are being used and in a different variants of those libraries because these libraries are embedded at different places, the same library, but embedded in different places on operating systems, etc. And then of course, what products are impacted. All this is possible, number one, because you have your data coming from all your sources, different scanners, uh, software, uh, bill of material, et cetera, coming in on, on the single platform so that you can identify the CV from your infrastructure scans because it's scanning your Linux packages as well as your S open source scans through a SCA tool scanning that you might be doing, right? Because this is a unique situation where the same tool or same code base could be a binary as an RPM installer. It could also be a, a package man, uh, uh, a library that is being used. So once you have all that data, ability to kind of correlate that, normalize the data so that we are all talking in the same languages and then bring it up and also assess the risk of that, that that particular CV brings in, helps you handle the incident response. So imagine yeah. for a CISO, for a product uh, security team, having this information available to them five minutes after the news was broken, bro broken they exactly know what needs to be done. And, and that's a that's a really important point, right? Because there's this latency, right? So CVE is reported. Then we have the scanners need to start putting the the analysis into their into their engine. Then you need to deploy and update those scanners. Then you need to run them across all your portfolio. But what we just looked at, you you can take you we if you're already ingesting data from your ecosystem as you said software supply chain you got your s bomb your sea you've got kind of like oh, all of your infrastructure scanning that's already there that's finding other things associated with the um your know, xz utility library you've got visibility so the cve appears what you're trying to understand is exactly you said it's your blast radius what are the teams the products and the sub products that are potentially impacted. Let's now focus on, you know, before the scanners are ready, let's focus on doing manual inspection. Once the scanners are ready, let's go ahead and update the scanners there. Then let's hone in. It's all about this you know, uh, haystack, right? So I've got a big portfolio of products and teams that I'm managing. I don't know which ones I need to call this weekend and say, are we exposed? So at least I've got that visibility. Then the question is, well, are we exposed? Well, the scanner's going to help, but while you're waiting for the scanner, manual inspection, at least you've focused it down onto the specific things to understand that blast radius. And then you start to also just kind of like expand in the accuracy. I mean, this was a really sophisticated attack. I mean, the code was well obfuscated. Even if you were scanning the code with a, with a SAS tool, you wouldn't necessarily identify the problem because it was maliciously done. Um, it's come from a trusted source. So even if you're using reputation scores for the, for the library, it wouldn't have been found that way. Um, the only way would be to say you had like a, a, a repository of highly vetted, but then who's doing that vetting? And as you said, this, this was found by accident. Um, so I think the, the key is, and it's the same for any zero day. How do we mobilize to respond to that. And by having you know the visibility into what components are being used, having visibility into what teams are responsible and being able to orchestrate that um, initiative is, is key. So, you know, I think you're right. It's kind of like these happen like what, every long weekend? Yep. When's the next one? I think we have, is it is it Memorial Day that's coming up next? Oh, uh, well, I have some travel plans. I hope that's not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly.
Um, all right. Thanks very much, Rohan. Thank you, everybody. I uh, hope you found this useful. As always, click like, subscribe, and uh, we'll be we'll be back with the next breaking news story or back to our regular programming. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.